Zucker. Zucker? Mark Zuckerberg, is that you? Mark Zuckerberg? <laughs> hey guys, welcome back to My Singing Monsters. Since the last episode, I have spent several hours and several thousand diamonds. And now, I'm ready for the Wublin video. Also guys, in order to spend several thousand diamonds, I did have to spend another hundred dollars on diamonds. So if you, if you want, you could smash the like button. You don't have to but it would make me feel a little bit better and it would make my wallet feel a lot better. So as you guys can see here, I have all of the Wublins ready. Well, you can't really see they're all ready, but look, they're all ready. Okay, look at this. Look at the inventory on this one. I need one T-Rox and all the other ones are pretty much the same. So I've got the Wublins that have already uh, woke and, uh, and I've got the ones that I haven't yet. So there's seven new Wublins that I'm waking today and I'm, I'm excited, okay? Because Wublins are freaky. I want to see what this guy looks like. His name is Froom. All I know about this guy is that he's some sort of frog, guys. And I mean, I don't actually know that, but I'm pretty sure he's some sort of frog. He kind of looks like a frog. And I needed to put 12 frogs in him. That's a lot of frogs. I had to put a lot of stuff into a lot of things for this video, guys, but I made it happen. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna show you each Wublin just in case you haven't seen him before. I'll refresh my memory on what each Wublin is and then we'll wake the new ones. So we're gonna start with this guy right here, okay? Cause he's just so much fun. His name is Tungle and listen to him. He looks like he's got like a sock hanging out of his mouth, but that's his tongue and he's gonna play it like a bass guitar at some point. And also I think he's part Frankenstein. Oh, see? It's not much, but it adds so much. I mean, anything's gonna add so much when there's nothing else, but he adds a lot to the song, okay. Thwox may be easily tongue-tied when trying to vocalize, but the length of their tongues is fundamental to performing their soulful tune. With designated bands for gustation of any kind, it composes savory bass lines that fuse sound and taste in a multi-sensory experience. Man, I love music so much, I wish I could eat it. The Zinth thrives on the natural electricity emitted by Wublin Island. This monster stores the excess energy to power its glowing abdomen and produce a wonderful harmonic buzzing sound. A word of caution, don't stand too close to the Zinth unless you want to reek of the orange fizz and ozone smell that accompanies it wherever it goes. What the heck's that about? Next up, we'll go for this guy right here. His name is Ice Gleam. You scream, I scream. We all scream for Ice Gleam. So this is a Pixelotl, guys, which is a some sort of axolotl, okay? And he makes a, sort of a synthy noise as well, I believe. Uh, let's, let's turn him on, okay? Maybe we should turn him on first. Here we go. It already sounds pretty great, doesn't it? Like these three guys alone kind of make a nice little song. It's gymnastic ability and insatiable appetite for computer chips and dip can cause mayhem. The monster has been observed using its tail as a paddle, climbing ice flows, getting trapped in plumbing, and more. Some Wublins believe that it, if the Pixelotl only had a castle to roam around in, it would settle down. But alas, no such castle exists on Wublin Island. No castle! Oh my god, it's so empty up here, man! Ah! We're gonna kind of ruin the song by adding in some of the nasty stuff. <sighs> Let's start with this uh, Plague Doctor dude. Fink is his name, and he is a poke. Is that the poke's face? Or is it a mask procured from parts unknown? If it is indeed a mask, why? Is it bashful, cold, ghastly to behold? Or is this Wublin simply into cosplay? That would explain a lot. The poke's musical performance is a mesmerizing display of frantic grace and composed frenzy. And you're about to hear it. It is a bit frenzy-ish, you know? It's like a, a little bit much. Kind of makes me dizzy just watching this guy. I don't, I'm not like a big fan of this, you know? It's a little creepy. It reminds me of like an old church or something, like an old church organ, an evil one or something. <laughs> So next up, we got this thing. This is amazing, guys. Look, look at this beautiful pink thing with a thing in it. Yeah. Yeah. So the dude on the outside, does he do anything? Or, or is he just there to chill while the little guy inside does all the work? Well, this is a bona petite. 
Some musicians tickle the ivories, but the Bon Appetit prefers tickling the ribs. Or perhaps having its ribs tickled is much, is more accurate, depending on which of these two percussionists we're talking about here. Exactly, which one is it? Truth is, each is symbiotically connected to the other and equally responsible for delivering punchy kick patterns peppered with a little bottom end bulk. Oh, what? <laughs> Gosh, the words in this game, guys. This duo consists of two monsters amiably dubbed Bona and Petite by their Wublin pals. The smaller Petite puts the riff in midriff while the larger Bona grumbles endlessly about indigestion. Okay, well that's why they're called Bon Appetit, okay? Or are they called Marrow and Tickles? I don't know. We all know about this one. This is the first one I ever woke, guys, okay? This is uh, a Brump. There's a guy in my high school, his nickname was Brump, and I don't know why, and I think I already mentioned that when I woke this guy up. <laughs> Ew! Almost unique among Wublins, this monster's appearance definitely brings to mind the eggs used to wake it and also elicits a gag reflex. The Brump uses its fur corn like headstocks and floggy feet to forage for food. It's pretty nasty, but presumably like you, we just can't seem to look away. He's not that bad, guys. But the fact that he literally just screams, wake up the Wublins is like, come on, man, you could do better. Wake up the Wublins, wake up the Wublins. Wake up the wobblins, or maybe he can't. Maybe he can't do better than that, guys. This is the uh, aptly named Wija, because that's what he says. He says Wija. Listen to this guy, or at the very least, watch him dance around, because it's quite a beautiful thing to behold. Yeah. Whoa, that's great. He's kind of adorable, isn't he? He's certainly not my least favorite. Wajja 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 wajja. And dance. Alright. For a wobbling, the wajja is almost dainty. Named for its distinctive wajja wajja cry, it can most often be found standing on tippy toes so that its song rings out above the heads of other monsters. Wajjas scrupulously preen their feathers to create a sort of dish to amplify the sound of their voices. Oh, wow, really? Other supernaturals are always daring it to join in their capers, but the Wyja is better behaved than most, a trait for which it cryptically credits its furry feet. No, I can't I can't go getting into shenanigans with you guys. My feet are hairy, but, but maybe some other time. All right, guys, next up on the list, we've got Blueford, the Astropod. Wake up, dude. I mean, unmute, dude. More synth, okay? Not bad. There's an awful lot of synth in this song so far though. The Astropod is a bizarre amalgam of seemingly incompatible features that come together to create a truly unique monster performer. The electricity that courses through its wobbling body manifests itself between its antlers and in the color shifting tufts of its shell. Conversing with an astropod is a complicated affair as the slightest movement of its puny upper arms communicates nuanced subtext and exposes veiled thoughts. Um, uh, oh yeah, look at those tiny little baby arms down there, guys. I remember this one's called the Giger, guys. This is Kahoot the Giger. And let's uh, unmute. Yeah. Yeah, you guys already know that I love like, you know, saxophone sort of music. I don't know what the heck this instrument is, but it's uh, one of those types of instruments, you know? Amical but eccentric, the interior of the Giger is a plexus of intricate tubes which begin at its gaping mouth and culminate in its shoulder pipes. The meticulous movements of its many mandibles make for melodious music, but they may also be the mainspring of the mystifying glow that intermittently emanates from the junctions of this monster's body. The sequela of this glow, as of yet unknown, a fellow Wublin is usually appointed as a counter to monitor how much time is spent in the Giger's company. Guys, I'm pretty sure I know what they're saying here. I think they're saying that the guy is like sort of radioactive because uh, when you're measuring radioactivity, you use a Geiger counter and he's a Giger. So, okay, he's some sort of radioactive guy. Well, we're getting through them, guys. Only a couple left. Now we get the awful noises of the Screamu. Hello. 
see, guys. Listen to what this... Li listen to how this sounds, okay? And then I'm gonna mute him again. And I want you to listen to this and tell me if you can't hear Hello, hello, hello the in the background, the okay? Can you hear it? You can totally hear it. Hello, 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 hello. I swear I can hear it, guys. I don't know if you can hear it, but I can hear it, okay? And it freaks me out. By nature, the Screamoo has very drab coloring, so it spruces itself up with ribbons and paint splatter. Make no mistake, these adornments are the only bright things about the Screamoo. I mean, it's called a Screamoo after all. This delusional monster has no ears to hear itself and is of the opinion it can outsing an entire cache of fur corns. Right, you totally can. Screamo. Alright guys, now we're moving on to a pretty obvious sounding wobbling. You know this is gonna sound like a drum set, okay? This is Badum Tish, and he is a dwum roll. That's right. Make some music, bro. Look at this guy go, man. Look at him go. Look at all the arms he's got. They just go like in and out of his like feathery body. The dwum roll is armed to the teeth. Yet, because they are so well concealed by its feathers, it remains a mystery as to just how many arms the Dwum Roll has. This adroit percussionist has immaculate rhythm and can keep the beat alive with four or five or even six arms behind its back. Cause we don't know how many freaking arms this guy even got. Okay, so the four cheapest ones, guys, are this one, this one, this one, and this one. But I believe this one is the cheapest overall. Look at this, all it takes to wake this one, Two pummels, two sponges, three dandy do, Shelby, clamble, shrub. And I'm aware I read that in a weird order, okay? <laughs> so I need three more dandy do. I could fill it for 90, but that's silly, okay? I can get them cheaper than that. Who's your dandy do guy? I've got a great dandy do guy. So we're gonna do that on Water Island. Just gotta make three of those, and then boom, we're gonna have a new wobbling. I'm mostly just curious now, guys, how much does it cost? Six diamonds, that's it? So would you rather spend 18 diamonds or 90? Yeah. Your wobbling is ready to wake up. I'm not gonna go, guys. I'm gonna stay here, okay? Because if I get one more dandy do, I can get a second wobbling awoken, okay? And that one is, uh, I don't actually know what this thing is called, guys, because it's just called Irwin here, and that's not the name of the wobbling itself, so, uh, there we go. Or I guess it is the name of the wobbling itself, but not the name of the species of wobbling. Anyway, now there's two. Okay, so here we go. This is a... Scargo. So obviously it's some sort of snail thing, guys. And are those eyes? This is where things get crazy, guys. At least for me. Okay. Oh my gosh! Well, I thought those might have been eyes, and I was right. Scargo. Oh, and you're literally just gonna smash your eyes together. That's a cool trick. That's a great part. I can hear you doing it. Great party trick, man. Okay. Jeez Louise, man. That's quite the job. It's, I wonder where his brain is. He might not have one at all if he's just smashing his eyes together. Hmm. Nobody is sure. Monster handlers, why? I was in the middle of something. Nobody is sure whether the constant collision of the Scargo's clash symbol tipped eye stocks causes it any discomfort or if the Wublin has just gotten used to it. What is sure is that this monster's technique is near perfection. Many new percussionists can't seem to get a handle on the proper grip. Then again, if the symbols were attached to you, you might figure it out quicker than most too. All right, guys, next up, Irwin. What is this? Okay. Wow. Oh. Uh. Huh? It's like a, like a little flute type of thing. Get me out of here. I need to go take a look at the flute thing. It looks kind of like a recorder, guys. Oh, what the heck now? What, do you don't want me to do the wobbling thing? You can't stop me, monster handlers. Okay. Okay, what kind of... What kind of kind of instrument is this, man? I like the colors on this, though. I gotta say, it's not quite as disgusting. Um, as some of these other guys like those colors are just awful, okay? In addition to using them to play music some monsters take advantage of their unique features and body shapes and use them for other purposes In the case of the fleechworm 
Its resonant body cavity can generate a series of whistles that have an unusual hypnotic effect on other wublins. They can be used to coax others into doing unglamorous chores for it or to lovingly preen its leaf-like limbs. Some wublins are more resistant than others and playfully admonish the fleech worm so it doesn't become too mischievous. A bogart, two noggins, one fog, and another T-Rox. Okay. All right, guys, I got the rest of the wublins ready to go. They can all be woken now. So next up, gullet. The Zucker. Zucker? Mark Zuckerberg, is that you? Mark Zuckerberg? <laughs> sort of a dinosaur bird frog thing? Oh god, that's not that's not really a bird, is it? Oh my god, is that a kazoo? Kazooker? Oh no. Wait a minute. Guys, did I forget a did I forget a wobblin here? Jeez Louise. Blip squeak! What happened to my blipsqueak? Oh no. Oh no. Oh god. I don't know why they, uh, there's some sort of issue with Wubblin Island, guys. They keep kicking me out of it. Okay, well, apparently I have a little more work to do than I thought, guys. But I'll, I'll get it done, okay. Wow. We, we really needed this. Without your kazooing, what would we be doing? How do Zookers stay warm? Their mostly featherless bodies would appear to have little insulation. These ingenious specimens breathe in through their mouths, warm the air inside, and pump out their signature drone through their blowholes, producing a nice and toasty sensation. That's also why Zookers always appear red in the face. I can't believe I forgot a wobbling, guys. I feel terrible now. Not because it's a huge mistake that I can't fix, but because I have to fix it by breeding even more stuff. Go over there, okay? What do you even need? You, you better not you better not be the crazy one. Okay, he's not that bad. I could fill it for it. Nope. I will do this myself, okay? Uh, this guy might be the worst though. Back, backbeat. Look at that, 24 Trumplers! 12 Clambles, 12 T-Rocks, 12 Pummels, and eight Shelby. This guy better be something good, man. Okay, well I'm gonna get I'm gonna get through this guy first, okay? And then I just gotta take a quick detour and do some stuff or whatever. Is this the giant dipster, guys? Somebody told me it was a giant dipster, and I'm not really happy about it. If I'm honest, it's called mulch. Wake up, mulch. Okay, yeah, you look like you could maybe be a dipster. I mean, that's not. Get down. Oh, get. Are you serious right now, dude? Get down. Get down. You kind of funky? Down, get down. <laughs> More like get out, am I right? Bro, I'm serious. I don't I don't know why this is happening. Okay. It's just smash smash the like button, guys. This video is going real well. The mulch is a mound of potting soil with a pronounced underbite. Its vocalizations suggest it gargles with ballast and sandpaper for fun. Its berries, should one be so foolish as to sample them, taste like cinnamon mayonnaise mixed with ham cola and profound regret. Oh, that's supper worthy, man. That is some supper worthy stuff, guys. Wow. The leaf like appendage atop its noggin acts as a handy parasol, protecting it from inclement weather and some of the more peculiar atmospheric emissions endemic to Wublin Island. It's easily startled by hiccups and denim hats. Everyone is startled by denim hats, man. I'll be back in a second, but I gotta fill this up. I have 2518 diamonds. Let's see how this goes. All right, guys. Let's, uh, let's wake up. Phalange the blip squeak. Uh, I kind of feel like this is gonna sound like a cybop. Um, uh, it's a it's a the hillbilly thing. Uh, the, the 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 ethereal. It's gonna sound like that, or a cybop because they both kind of sound similar. Oh dear, what? What was that? That was a different sort of voice, but that was a robo voice, wasn't it? What? Eyes, ears. Eyes, ears. Nose. Nose, yeah. Toes. Oh. Eyes. Eyes, ears, nose. Ears. Okay. Nose. Toes. Well, you're very good at identifying body parts. Before settling into its finalized form, this impassioned Wublin decided that its musical contribution would be to recite several words that it heard on faint radio frequencies from the human universe in a kingdom known only as the Mateland. 
It's Maker acquiesced to these linguistic leanings, making sure to fashion a robotic body that featured all the parts mentioned. Well, in one form or another, or rather, in a way that only a monster could truly do. I suppose so. Alright, Froom. Froom the... what was this thing called again? Dermot. Well, uh, it, it could be like, like Kermit the frog, right? There's many reasons I think this is a frog. It's a froggy looking thing. Yeah, for sure. Oh, the heck was that, man? Why'd you have to make a noise like that? Kind of like it. Kind of like it, guys. In a weird way, okay? He's very enthusiastic. Okay, how about this? How about I just quit the game, okay? And I'll get back in. Maybe that'll solve our issues, because it really wants me to not be here. The shy and unsightly Dermot harbors clusters of itchy warts all over its skin. But what is an occasional nuisance for the Wublin is a great boon for mushrooms of all varieties. As quickly as the monster can scratch away new... As quickly as the monster can scratch away new growth with its long nails, there's more where that came from. Oh well, spontaneous singing is as good a salve as any. Boom. Done with that one. Don't worry, Bella. I'll be out of here in no time. Against my will. Oh yeah. Oh, it sure is. It's just a... So that's not bad. Wait, are you doing something right now? Wait, I'm not there. I'm not there. Wait, Bella! Oh, okay, there we go. She's hitting her face against it. Alright. And, uh, did I hear some sort of symboling? Probably not, right? Yes? How are you doing that? In the gloomy twilight of Wublin Island, the eerie gleam of the Creepuscule's plate can make it even harder to tell what time of day it is. This monster takes full advantage of its unique physiology to showcase true percussive prowess. The nails that tip its long finger-like limbs are actually tightly packed strands that are more like stiff hairs. The hair on its head is probably a wig, but hey, right on. Whatever makes the creep of school feel good, right? Exactly. Live your life, man. Ta-da! Oh, he's kind of cute. More percussion, huh? I guess so. This guy's going to town, and I'm not there to see it. Yeah, okay. So more percussion, guys. He's pretty enthusiastic about it, too. He's doing a really good job. Okay. One might reasonably conclude that rat-tat-tapping upon its eardrums one might reasonably conclude that rat-tat-tapping upon its own eardrums all day would give the Timpa a headache. Timpa! Timpano! Guys, I had tympana, a tympanoplasty. It's a surgery that skin puts a skin graft over a hole in an eardrum, okay? And now I have tympanosclerosis, which is a buildup of calcium on my eardrum. So I know all about timp. I know what that means, okay? I get the reference. Okay, on the contrary, this Wublin delights in banging the drum particularly for a good cause. While it doesn't have much in terms of material wealth, it selflessly devotes its time and energy to helping fellow monsters however it can, making the Timpa a very good friend indeed. Now what, you gonna kick me out? Huh? I got the whole crew, to, the whole squad is here, guys, except for one monster, and you know why, okay? I mean, he is here, he's just not uh, he's not awake, okay? And how am I supposed to wake this guy up? Honestly, look at all the stuff I had to put in here. All that work, man, all those hours and thousands of diamonds. And I would need 21.6K to wake this guy any other way. I could, of course, nuke the whole place right now if I wanted. Just shove it all into him. But I don't know if I want to do it, guys. Should I do it? Let me know. All right, guys, well... <laughs> This video had a couple of issues in it. I don't know what was going on here with the whole Wublin Island thing, but they were like, no, 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 you're looking too long. You need to leave and come back, okay? But I did it. I got all the Wublins, and uh, I'm happy about it, okay? This was an island that I had neglected, and there's another island that I've neglected even further, and of course, that's the Celestial Island. There's only 12 Celestials, and at some point, I'm gonna get them, but they're even harder to get than Wublins, so don't know when that's gonna happen. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you next time. Goodbye.